Jane from Woven Art Jewellery. Welcome to my booth. I specialise in woven and crocheted silver jewellery, primarily working with sterling fine silver, but I also sometimes incorporate touches of gold. I am based in the UK and now live in Herefordshire and as you can see I have some wonderful views from my house and workshop. All of my items are individually handmade so this means I can make them to exact size and even customise them by adding or using different gemstones. I also make completely bespoke designs and this would mean that we would sit down, discuss your ideas. I would gain an understanding of whether it's for a special event or a special or to mark a special occasion. I would then go away, come up with some photos and drawings of finished designs. And once you're completely happy, I would then go away and make it. So let's go and take a tour of my workshop. So here's my workshop. And as you can see, I've got an awful lot of pliers up there. But like any jewellery maker, I can never get enough tools. This is where I do my doodles for my designs and where I write instructions to remind me how to do them for next time. And here are lots more tools, mainly files and cutters. And this is where I do all the polishing. You can see there's a few items there which are waiting to be finished. That's my pendant drill. And over this side I have all my forming and hammering tools. So a wide selection of different hammers. And those are bracelet mandrels for forming the metal that you make into nice uh, ovals or or circles and that's one that I used to, to do collars on and torque necklaces and then lots of different forming and cutting tools there and over here this is where I do all the soldering and that's the um, clamp that I have the vice press on the wall which I use when I'm twisting and weaving wire. So now you've had a chance to see where I make it let me show you my jewellery in more detail starting with bracelets. I seem to make an awful lot of bracelets I think it's because I love wearing them but it's also because you can actually see a bracelet yourself when it's on your wrist as opposed to a necklace which you can only usually see in the mirror and the same with earrings um, but anyway I just seem to make a lot of bracelets so um, there's a uh, there's a very big selection in my shop for you to have a look at but um, I'll just go through a few of the the different ranges that I do so if you're looking for something that's just quite simple um, just a simple silver bracelet um, but with a little bit of a, a nice Celtic twist, I do something like this, which is um, just got a, a woven wave effect. Um, and it's got interest because of the different twisted wires that, that run through the design. And that's done up with a very simple hook clasp, which is very easy to take on and off. So that's a really lovely, elegant and simple bracelet. I then also have something made from a basket weave. Um, and I have this 
available as a bangle as here which is obviously a complete circle and also as an open cuff um, to open at the back and again simple and stylish but something you could wear easily every day something a little bit more um, decorative is this um, four strand weave uh, and this has got um, some lovely diamond cut wire at the centre which gives it a beautiful sparkle which I hope you can see and this is made as an open cuff so it means it can can fit sort of most wrist sizes because you can just um, put it on over your wrist and you can either squeeze it closed or open it up slightly This bracelet is one of the thinnest um, bracelets I do. And I do make it just as a plain band, plain bangle like that, or I can add a charm to it like this one, which is set with a beautiful pinky red rhodolite garnet. And that's obviously moves freely down the, down the bangle. So if you're looking for something less simple and a bit more statement, then I have a few bracelets like that as well. My newest bracelet is this one, which is an asymmetric design. So it graduates from, from a very thin, um, thin shape one end to a wider, wider shape at the other end. And this is... This has been been uh, made with lots of different woven lengths in different styles. So you've got like a three strand tran weave there, a little bit of basket weave, a twist weave, a sort of three strand weave with twist weave down the side, etc. So lots of different weaves incorporated in there, together with little sterling silver circles. So again, just something a little bit different, but a bit more of a statement than the other bracelets. This one is again is more of more of a substantial cuff bracelet. So again, it's got the open end, which means it fits easily on your wrist. And this is set with a lovely little amethyst at the middle in the centre. And with this, each of the strips I've textured in a slightly different way. So some of them are just like a hammered texture. Some of them have more of a hatch, a cross hatch sort of a texture. And that one just more stripy texture. So. It just gives it real interest and just a real statement cuff. So um, yeah, I've plenty other statement ones, so please check out my shop for further ones of those. Um, this one is probably one of the heaviest ones I've I've made. Um, as you can see, that it's made from a very thick section of basket weave. So this takes an awful lot of silver to weave this much basket weave. I've then set um, some silver squares at the front, which I've put in a diamond shape and set with a beautiful lapis lazuli at the front. That's a really substantial, substantial piece of jewelry. So if you're looking for something that's maybe personalised, there are a few options. Uh, some of the bracelets that I, I have could be engraved. Um, and these ones particularly have, have already been engraved, hand engraved with, with some lovely messages. This one says, I love you. And then on the other side, it says, to the moon and back. So there's two solid sections there, which could be personalised with your own message if you wanted. And I then have a three strand weave there on either side. The other bracelet is similar, um, but that just has a slightly different weave. And this one is, says, I love you. Four 
for being you. So they're lovely messages, um, but as I say, I can personalise them with any message that you'd like on there. So sometimes I incorporate little bits of gold into my bracelets and I've got two available at the moment that have nine karat gold within them. The first one is this one. And this is a lovely woven weave again and it's set with three hearts at the front. The outer two are sterling silver and the middle one is nine karat gold. And this closes with, again, the nice sort of simple hook clasp. The other one that I have with gold is a thinner basket weave bangle. And it's set with two little nine karat gold um, balls on the end. And that's sort of like a crossover style. So if you're looking for something ultra glamorous, then some of my gemstone bracelets would be the ones that you'd be, be interested in. I have this style, um, which can be made with any gemstone really. This one is set with a lovely Swiss blue topaz. As you can see, it's, it's a continuous bangle using the woven wave weave. That's a lot of W's. <laughs> and it's looped at the front and within the loop, the gemstone is set. So again, that's a really elegant bracelet, but just a, that extra bit of glamour because of the gemstone. And I also got that available currently with a garnet set at the front too. You can see beautiful deep red colour. But again, if you wanted that bracelet and you wanted a specific gemstone, then all you have to do is ask. And if you want, if you love amethyst like I do, I do seem to make an awful lot of things with amethyst, then this bracelet would be right up your street. Look at that beautiful gemstone. It's a faceted, dark amethyst. And it's absolutely beautiful. And that's set on a three strand cuff bracelet. So again, opens at the back. Making it easy to get on and off. Another style that I have is a bangle which opens with sort of a hook and loop. So again, it's a thin basket weave design, but then the gem set the gem is set on the clasp. So if you can see that from the side and you see how it opens like that, which gives it a really, really nice delicate feel and just an extra little touch. So I currently have that with that amethy amethyst and also I have it with a lovely opal which you can see it's got beautiful fire in it but it's even better in reality when you don't have all these lights on it. Another gem set uh, bangle is this one. I have two currently available. So this is set with a beautiful ruby and this is quite a, a heavier, it's a heavier bangle. So there's a lot of silver in this, but it's sort of a textured band textured and woven but 
but it's a lovely um it would be a lovely ruby anniversary gift for for a wife or or even a lovely valentine's gift if um someone wanted to be that lovely and buy it for you <laughs> so i have that in the ruby and i also have it in a slightly lighter version set with a deep topaz which i'm trying to get the blue to show You know, it's quite hard to see that the, the colour's looking very black on camera, but it's uh, like a, a London blue topaz. That's a really beautiful blue colour. So there are lots of other bracelet styles available, so please take a look at my shop and let me know if you'd like anything specific. So this is a selection of some of the crocheted items I currently have available. To crochet with silver, the wire needs to be really malleable, so you have to use quite thin wire. This is an example of the wire I use. This is 0.3 mil diameter. Um, I also use um, I also use 0.4 mil diameter, so it's very thin. But as you can see, it is very malleable. So let me show you a couple of the items up close. This bracelet is crocheted with a technique called Tunisian crochet, which gives a much sort of closer weave than, than other crochet. Um, this one is basically a length of uh, sterling silver, which has been crocheted, and at the center I've um, attached a, a, a handmade silver cylinder which I've textured and then I've bezel set an opal at the, at the front. It has got beautiful fire but it doesn't really show it on this uh, on, the, on the camera um, and that closes with a nice little slide clasp which is really easy to get on and undo again. This one is made from individual circles so each one is crocheted individually and the gemstones which in this case are rubies and quartz are crocheted in while you're or while you're actually crocheting the circles i then stitch the crocheted circles together um, to the correct length and again then attach a slide clasp but uh, this is beautifully sparkly especially with the faceted rubies that are in it I do some where I combine crochet and sort of solid silver um, and there's a couple examples here. So this one is the crocheted rectangles which include pyrite and I've also set in between textured um, squares of silver. The uh, nice thing about this one is it's reversible so you could have the texture side up or you could have the shiny polished side up, whatever you prefer. And this one is finished with a handmade toggle clasp. Another one where I've combined the silver and the crochet is this one, which again is made crocheted circles, much denser than the ruby one, and then some textured rings, which um, I've then joined together. And then again, set with a handmade toggle clasp. If you like amethyst, then this next bracelet will be your thing. This is basically um, filled with hundreds and hundreds of amethyst. So you've got a darker, darker faceted ameth amethyst and then lavender amethyst and also quartz. Um, and this was done as three strips, which you can see, I think three separate strips, which I then plaited together. Um, and it makes a really fluid, 
bracelet. And again, slight clasp on the end to make a nice con continuous circle of the bracelet. The last what last bracelet I have here is um, one that I made as, as sort of in a sort of corsage style. So this has got a flower at the front, set with pearls and peridot at the centre, and then two little leaves either side. So again, beautiful bridal bracelet. Um, I did actually have a necklace that matched this, um, but I sold that one a while ago. Um, but uh, say so crochet is, is lovely, I think, in sterling silver because it looks very delicate and it's very malleable, but because it's metal, it's strong. So it's, uh, yeah, it's very durable, but beautiful. <laughs> so I have a couple of crochet necklaces available. This first one is called my Sea Goddess Necklace because it's was inspired by seaweed and by the look of the sea with the lovely blues and greens. So this is set with graduating colours of Amazonite, Apatite, lighter Amazonite, Aquamarine and clear fastic quartz. You can see the frame is basically made from sterling silver, which I've wire wrapped together with the crocheted strands coming off of them. And I can imagine that this would look really stylish and really striking on uh, just a high necked black dress or something like that. It'd certainly be a statement. <laughs> The other necklace I have is this one which is made from red carnelian, Shorovsky pearls at the centre and white quartz. And again, similar to the bracelet earlier, each circle has been individually crocheted and then they've been attached together and to the necklace of chain part which again is also encrusted with carnelian and quartz. And this is finished with a lovely little sterling silver heart clasp. So when you crochet with wire, it's basically very similar to crocheting with wool. And I do use standard crochet hooks and you can see a selection here. Um, you tend to use metal ones because obviously if you're crocheting with, with silver, which is a metal, it will break um, and bend plastic cooks. I mean, I have been known to bend metal ones as well, but they're obviously more resistant than, than plastic ones. So these are sort of some of the sizes that I use depending on the effect I want to get. Um, and as I say, it is very similar to crocheting with wool. The only real difference is that if the wire twists into a knot, you can't just pull the wire to free it as you would normally with wool because the knot would just get tighter and tighter. So it does take a lot longer to crochet because you have to keep ensuring that the wire is not free and, and kink free and keep smoothing it out. So each item does take quite a while to, to make. I have lots of earrings in my shop, um, so please take a look. But I'll just show you a couple of my favourites. These ones are lovely sort of hoop earrings, which are set with a beautiful eye light at the bottom, which is a really deep purple, bluey purple colour. And these are on little ear wires. By the way, I can supply most of my earrings with clips. If any of you 
don't have pierced ears and you wanted ear clips then I do sell those so um, just get in touch if there's a style of earring you like and obviously I can then tell you if it's possible to make up an ear clip most of them should be um, also I could make some with posts as well if you prefer those two two clips so clips or ear wires one of my other favorite is a pair of little pretty studs which are made from strips of silver wire Again, really delicate little earrings with a nice little butterfly back. Sweet and elegant. Can I say, please, um, please check in my shop because there's lots of different styles there. And contact me if you'd like any different fittings. I have a, a quite a wide range of necklaces in my shop including pendants um, and statement necklaces and I'll just take you through some of the statement necklaces that I've got currently available. This one here features hand forged textured leaves at the front and I think if you if I take it off you'll be able to see that it's the leaves are, have some shape and texture. And this is set on sort of like vines that are crisscrossing across the necklace and a woven section at the top. And then at the back, the necklace is finished with another little leaf which hangs from the extender chain. sits really nicely on the neck and it really is a striking necklace. The next one I'd like to show you is this one and this features a mixture of crocheted circles and this is set with quartz and pyrite and then some other woven circles and plain textured circles. And there's a section there at the front which is sort of the, the circles are, are fixed together to make it hang beautifully on the neck. So this necklace here has is comprised of a number of woven sections and then solid silver sections. And if you have a look a bit at the back of it, you can see that they're all attached with silver tube, which means that they move beautifully. Um, and see the the shiny shiny lens catch the light beautifully. And this sort of torque effect keeps the shape nicely on the neck. And that's finished with a little heart at the back, which bears the hallmark. This other little necklace is really sweet. So it basically has a woven section at the back and on that I've attached five hearts four little ones and one big textured one at the front the four uh, have got like a brush finish and the one at the front is more 
shiny but with texture. And that is finished with a lovely little heart clasp. If you're looking something that's really easy to wear and very elegant, but again with a Celtic twist, this necklace is just lovely. You can see how it's shaped at the top. So it literally curves around the, the collarbones and just has a lovely, lovely, elegant feel about it. If you like longer necklaces, then this necklace is really the one for you. It's made of individual circles of woven wire. And each one of these has been individually woven, shaped, and then soldered into the next one. But you can see it's it's a heavy necklace, lots of silver in it, but it just really catches the light from every sort of facet. It's the top part is just chain, so where it goes around your neck, it's really nice and comfortable. And lastly, this one features a combination of crocheted circles, which that one has quartz and pyrite in the centre of it. And this one is just a plain, plain crocheted circle. And then you've got textured and woven rings. And that's sort of like a midi necklace, so it's really uh, it's a really nice length, and you can see how beautifully it sparkles. So please take a look in my shop because there there are a lot more necklaces there, and a lot more small pendants as well. I do a range of rings in my shop, um, so I'll just show you a couple of, of the different types I do. So obviously this one is a real big statement ring featuring a beautiful amethyst, which as you know is one of my favourite stones. But it's got beautiful purples, beautiful shades in it, and it's just made with a basket weave band. And it's set with like a gallery wire. stunning. I have other than simpler gem set rings such as this one which is set with a beautiful amber. That's a very simple thin band, that's a really elegant little ring. Also have this beautiful Swiss blue topaz ring which is set with a beautiful faceted, faceted cabochon. And again, that's with a lovely um, two strand weave band.
This one is set with a lovely rainbow moonstone, which I hope you can see the beautiful blues in the stone. And that's set with a slightly thicker band. Beautiful and shiny. If you're looking to, for something a bit plainer, um, I do have just very simple band rings, such as this one. This has a frosted finish and it's a very tightly compacted weave. And then something similar is this one, which is basically the same, same ring, but just given a different finish. So you can see one is frosted and one is very shiny. also have this one here which is like a triple weave ring so it's quite a wide ring so you have a three strand weave in the middle and then just some twisted weaves on the outside so that's sort of what it's like on so it's quite a wide ring So I have lots of rings in my shop so again please take a look and let me know what size you'd like what stone you'd like and I can make anything to order something new I added to my range about a year and a half ago was a range of hair accessories it, it started because somebody asked me to do a bespoke design for them and they wanted a hair barrette. I've never made one before, so I had to do a lot of research and a lot of testing of different clips and different designs to see what worked. Um, and now, a year and a half later, I have quite a nice range. So let me just show you some of those. This is one of the large, larger ones I make. And this is set on an eight centimeter French barrette clip. As you can see, it is a genuine French barrette clip, which are the, the, the highest quality that you can buy. And if you can see here, I do actually rivet the, the silver front piece onto the barrette rather than gluing it on. So the fact that they're riveted on means that they're very strong, they're not going to come unglued, and it's a very durable, durable barrette. So this features a lovely textured background and a nice wavy design on the front. So I say that's an eight centimeter barrette at the back. The other ones I make in that size are this design. Um, this one also comes with uh, an oval emerald on the top here and that's proved really popular but I also make them plain like this without the gemstone. And again, the same barrette clip on the back. The other large one I have is one that I made just this week. And that's again, a textured background with a couple of woven strips and a lovely little brushed heart in the middle, as well as these little details here. And again, heavy duty barrette clip on the back. So those are the three larger sizes that I have at the moment and then I have a medium size clip which is a six centimeter clip and the designs I have in that one are this just a very simple uh, wave design again on the same French barrette clip and riveted on. So another one I have in medium size is this one, which is a similar design to the last one, but it has lovely shiny textured ends and is set with a gorgeous lavender amethyst, which is just so twinkly. 
again, nice barrette clip that opens and closes really firmly. Another plain one in the medium size is this design. So again, a simple one, but very, very pretty. So that's that one. So then I have a couple of smaller ones which are set on four centimeter barrettes. So these are for obviously use with thinner hair or maybe just as little side clips. And this one is set with a really beautiful Swiss blue topaz. And again, same barrette clip on the back, but a four centimeter size. You can hear that nice click showing that it's really secure. And then finally, and finally this one, which is slightly different design, again on a four centimeter clip, and it's got a twisted weave center and some twisted wires either side. And again, riveted to the back plate. And all hallmarked, they're all hallmarked, I don't know if you can see that there. So that's my own unique hallmark. So I've also just started making a couple of hairpins and um, hair circles. So we have these ones here. So this one is a smaller one and it's got quite an interesting weave design on it, um, slightly irregular. And that comes in with a hairpin that you would then tuck through the hair and tuck out the other side, holding the hair securely. So I have that ring in that round, smaller size, and also in a larger oval, which is just a slightly different design, just the twist weave design. And again, that would come with a hairpin. And I currently have three different hairpins available, and you can choose whichever one you prefer, or obviously I could set them with a completely different gemstone as well. So you see the three here. The first one here is a beautiful faceted labradorite. I think you can see the flashes of blue there. Stunning. Second one, my favourite again, Emma Amethyst. Just a nice round, uh, oval smooth amethyst. And the final one is a moonstone. And there. Uh, We'll just finish with a very smooth point on the end so you're not going to injure yourself or anyone else with those. Obviously I'm coming up with new designs all the time so if there's anything that you like the look of but you want a different gemstone or you want something with a slightly different design then please get in touch. So with my jewellery, I haven't forgotten about the men in our lives um, and I do make a range of jewellery for men, including cufflinks, rings, bracelets and necklaces. Some of these obviously could be unisex as well, so not exclusively for men, especially the, um, the necklaces, but, um, but primarily for men. So if we start with some cufflinks, these little cufflinks here are woven hand woven from teeny tiny little strips of silver so they're very they're tiny but they're very time consuming because each strip has to be cut soldered together put onto a silver backing and then obviously attach a clip the cufflink clip so this is a nice has a nice sort of bullet shape cufflink clip which is really substantial so they're really cute and really understated but very unique little little cufflinks something that's a little little bit bigger are these celtic cufflinks so they've got a strip of woven silver in the middle and then they're put onto a, a, a rectangular piece of silver. 
and I don't know if you can see but I've actually put like a really heavily frosted finish on it so it just gives it a slightly rustic finish um, and also because it's not shiny silver it's going to be much more resistant to scratching as well which is great so and again it's got the nice bullet shape fittings on the back and these cufflinks are quite different they um, feature a sort of fractured effect in the center with a textured back to it and this is finished with a brushed effect and this has a squarer fitting on the back so rings I create a number of different rings that could be for men or women, but this one is very much a man's ring. It's um, got a nice Celtic twist centre surrounded by four lengths of silver either side. And then it's set with a, a really striking black onyx at the front. And I also make this ring without this gemstone so like that in effect this has got a slightly hammered texture which I hope you can see but it could be again a brush finish like on the cufflinks or it could be completely smooth silver whichever you prefer so this is another ring that I do it's a very simple Celtic band three strands twisted and this has been sort of quite heavily brushed to give it a, a sort of nickel looking effect and quite rustic. You can also have it in a shiny finish like this which is basically the same ring it's just been twisted further and more compactly but you can see that's very shiny so it could be done in either finish. This is the uh, bracelet I have available at the moment for men, which incorporates that same twisted, same Celtic twisted wire centre, bordered by, bordered by other silver, and then with a textured solid end on each end of the bracelet. really stylish on. So now we move on to necklaces which I say are made for men but could be for women as well. I have this one which is a Greek key necklace so it's got three little Greek keys set into the middle of a rectangular piece which is bordered by twisted wire and if you see on the back it's got a bale made out of tube so I've attached that to the back of the of the necklace so that means that the wire runs through really nicely and this comes with a lovely snake silver snake chain which is really comfortable to wear another Celtic design is this one which is set with a central weave of silver and on a background of textured metal and you see it's been curved to give it some more interest and so it sits really nice on the neck and again has the same tube bale and snake chain. If you like the fractured cufflinks that I showed you a minute ago you'll like the necklace as well which is um, which matches and you can probably see the texture on that a little bit more and on the cufflinks so it's quite unusual and just really stylish and again same bale 
same snake chain. And finally, we have this one, which matches more of the ring designs that I had. Um, again, Celtic with a nice curved profile and the same type of bale. Hopefully going to be making lots more men's jewellery in the coming months, so keep checking back at my shop. Thank you so much for visiting my booth today. If you have any questions or would like to discuss a bespoke design, then please email me at jane at wovenartjewellery.co.uk. Coming up next is a short promo video showing some of the processes used when making my jewellery, so please take a look. I really hope to see you at a live event soon. I use a number of different weaves in my jewellery and this definitely gives it a Celtic feel. And as each piece is individually woven or crocheted by hand, each one is also completely unique. I live in the UK and all my jewellery is hallmarked by the Edinburgh Assay Office. Hallmarking is a legal requirement in the UK, but it also gives customers peace of mind that they are buying genuine silver or gold. Making bespoke items is really lovely because clients are asking you to interpret their ideas and create something that is really unique and that often has a real significance or meaning behind it.